everyone, it's Jess here from the Scrappy Sisters. So, we have got some exciting news. Katie and I applied for a position on the Confessions of a Paper Addict design team and we were selected, which is awesome. So, we are serving a six-month term of design team members uh, together as a team because we are the Scrappy Sisters together. Um, so basically that means you're going to see a lot more cut file layouts from us. I am dusting off my Silhouette Cameo and actually using it for once in my lifetime. And we're going to be using a lot of Virginia's cut files from the Confessions of a Paper Addict Um Etsy shop and yeah hopefully you love what you see and love what we start doing because that would be pretty awesome and yeah we're really 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 excited some of you know that Katie used to be on the Kidaholics Kids design team and I did a guest spot on that design team but this is our first together collaborative design team effort so pretty excited about this next six months and what that's going to bring now what am I doing here so I don't have super exciting markers I don't have the Copics markers or anything like that so I'm actually just using your normal old Faber-Castell connector pens because I got them they are basically brand new in that so you know there's they're not damaged they're they're pretty crisp color still um which works in my favor and I just pulled out my orangey yellowy colors and I'm using those to um ah oh, panic <laughs> what that looked like on the outside was a really nice lighter yellow what it looks like on the paper is fluoro like a highlighter so I use it thinking, oh yeah, that could be cool. It'd be like a nice highlighter pop of color. Mm, in real life, it just looks ridiculous. Like I've got really, really bright highlighter and colored in the center of those little baubles. So I just went over those with the yellow. So I've zoomed in super close, well, as close as I can, to show you in a bit more detail here what I'm doing. So I've got the orange, sort of the darkest of the three colors. And I'm just putting like a little crescent around half of the circle. No huge rhyme or reason to where the orange is going. Um, I started off putting it where I thought, you know, the natural shadow would be and then realized I really suck at <laughs> doing that and getting the correct spot for where the shadow would be depending on the sun. It's just not my forte. So I end up not overthinking it too much and just putting it pretty much anywhere because I figure the berries are kind of going to be in any spot on the tree and some will be shaded and some will be in sun so you know I'm just going to roll with it then I get the sort of dark yellow color and um, build from the orange uh, so just another little you know um, half crescent again half moon again and then with the light yellow I just color in all the rest and I am sort of going on top of what was previously there just to kind of blend those colors together so that they don't um, have a really obvious you know there's one and like a line and then there's the next line and then there's the yellow um, they all kind of mold in together which in my opinion looks really cool and sort of gives that gradient effect or the ombre effect to um, the berries. So I end up colouring the berries and the insides of the flowers. I am denied about continuing because I really love it and I think it's looking really cool. I'm like, you know, I could do the leaves on the plants, I could colour the flowers, but then um, I don't know if you can tell, but they're around the outside. It's it's gold. Basically, the outline is gold. It's not um, black and white. It's yeah. I think you can tell that it's shiny, uh, and I kind of love that and want it to have its sort of life of its own as well. So I decide I think I'm gonna leave it. So this is uh, a Kaiser Craft paper, I do believe, from the blessing or blessed blessed I think our collection from Kaiser Craft it's probably 
three releases ago by now. Um, so not super, super old, but not super new either. Uh, out in about December, January, I think. Um, so yeah, just doing the insides of the flowers now. Same technique, just starting with the orange, the darkest orange all the way around the outside of those insides and then um, building on that with the next light orange and then the yellow right in the centre. So I'm really loving just that pop of colour and how that's looking. So when that's finished, I get my scissors and spend quite a bit of time cutting this out. I really uh, decided I want it to be quite a fine cut. I don't want a lot of... of um, you know sort of white space around the outside I want to really fussy cut it get it really quite close so I don't put any of that on camera because I spent quite a decent amount of time fiddling around with that but when I come back you will see it's already been cut out um, mostly I cut it out because the sentiment on the paper just wasn't going to work for me uh, and where like I wasn't really sure where to put my photo when I mean, I could have just rolled with it like that, but uh, I decided that wasn't going to work. So I'm just having a look. I have all my photos pre-printed for this month, and I'm just having a look for what ones I'm going to use on the page. I decided to go with the picture of my two boys because it's cute, and I want to. <laughs> um, and I just think it, it goes nice with the floral. So this paper is not 12 by 12. It comes in the Kaiser Craft album. Uh, and the album I'm using is a little bit older and it annoys me. It's the, the pocket pages are just a weird shape. They're not 12 by 12 shape. They're like 11 and three quarters. Why would you do that? And then by like 13 or something. So it is the most ridiculous shape. It's really frustrating. But anyway, I decided I wanted to back this on a piece of colored cardstock um, because the paper is really super thin uh, and I just thought it'd look cute to back the outside give it a bit of a border but I'm not sure what color yet so I'm just going to work with it uh, as it is I've already cut it down uh, and I'll find a backing paper at the end once I have a bit of a better idea as to what color would work well so uh, I just put a little bit of glue in that top corner because I know it's going to be a little bit flimsy up there because as you can see I've cut it quite small and then I'm just gluing down the main parts I kept sort of the um, the berries and the leaves not glued because I know I want to stick a few bits underneath so I'm sort of lightly gluing those down but I'm leaving the possibility to put my photo underneath that or put some embellishments underneath that those ones at the top I know I don't need to put anything under so I have stuck that down a little bit better so once I do that, you're probably thinking, oh my God, like you've just wasted all of that beautiful flower that you just spent hours coloring and then even longer cutting out. No, no, I will use every little bit that I cut off. So I'm just going to cut these off and then they are going to enhance around the edge of the page. So I do not waste pretty much anything that gets cut off actually, which I'm pretty cool about. So I'm going to put a little bit down um, over there on that side of the paper, on the left hand side of the paper, just to sort of flow across the page in a diagonal. But I'm also going to spread it down a little bit lower in that empty space as well. And then I also have just a, tiny, a few tiny, tiny, tiny little bits left that I don't want to waste, but I'm not really sure work with those two little clusters. So I'm actually just gonna put them up the top on the left as well. So yeah, I end up with sort of using those leftovers to make three little bits off the page to just kind of give the impression that there's flowers everywhere. There's the whole page is surrounded by flowers. And I love it. It means I haven't wasted any of the, you know, of the things that I spent hours cutting or coloring, which is pretty cool and yeah, I just think that surrounding the page like that just gives that impression that there's um, floral and flowers and, and that everywhere, which I really like that as well. 
So I'm just using my craft, craft glue. I shared this glue in one of my other videos. Um, I'm new to this glue and I really like it so far. The nozzle is quite thin. Um, it's just the, is it Mont, M-O-N-T-E, um, craft glue. Just, just, it's really just a white glue, so probably a pre-VA. So it's not a quick dry, it's not a tacky glue, um, but it doesn't take long to dry and it dries clear. It holds everything really well. I haven't found anything that it's not holding yet. Having said that, I haven't tried it on like acrylic pieces yet. Um, but I just really like how smooth it comes out. And yeah, the thin nozzle that comes on the bottle. Uh, I haven't had a huge amount of drama with the nozzle clogging. But I do have a pin handy that I have been shoving down the nozzle. I must say though, be careful with the pin and how long you keep it in there. Uh, I took it to the hospital when I went to sleep school with my son and I didn't want it spilling in my bag so I left the pin in the nozzle which worked really well, it didn't spill in my bag but it actually made the glue, like that first initial glue, rusty. Like still glued but it had a rusty colour to it. So yeah, just be careful about keeping a pin in there. Um, yeah, for those of you that are wondering, I went to sleep school for a week with my little man. Um, we were really struggling. I know I complained in a couple of my other videos about sleep. Uh, basically, he was waking. He was six months old and he was waking every one or two hours overnight. Uh, and I just couldn't work it out. I don't know why. He never used to. He went from sleeping sort of six or seven hours to waking, yeah, continuously overnight uh, I cut dairy and soy from my diet to help his poor little tummy because that wasn't going well with his tum tum but otherwise we were just getting stuck in a rut basically and he was developing bad habits of waking up all the time I wasn't feeding him all the time because I knew not to do that but yeah trouble anyway so we went to spend a week at the hospital at sleep school and oh my god it was amazing um, basically he now sleeps, I do a dream feed at 10.30, 11 o'clock and he sleeps until about 5am and then I just go in and resettle him, I don't even feed him and he sleeps until sort of 6.37, so totally recommend sleep school, amazing. Uh, I'm just backing, I literally have these two squares of paper left from this collection, from this kit actually have nothing left um, paper wise I got quite a few embellishments so I thought I'd just pop those behind the photo just because you know no point this is the last layout I'm doing with the collect with the kit so no point in wasting those two little squares might as well use them this, I just think it's a bit funny that I've literally used everything else uh, I do actually have I shouldn't say that I've got one more um, layout to do with this kit I know I just said I hadn't but I've already backed the cut file um, by the time I'm making this video. I'm kind of doing two process videos at the same time. So I'd finish with the paper for that layout because I'd already done the back file. The back file, the cut file. Uh, and that will go, I haven't finished the rest of the layout, but that will go up later after this one. So I pulled, I'd been saving these gorgeous florals from this collection because I knew I wanted them on this page and it was so hard to save them. I just wanted them on every page. They are divine. But I just thought they'd look really gorgeous with the black and white and yellow um, flowers. It's just a really florally layout and I thought they'd look super cute. So... As I said earlier, I didn't completely pin down those leaves because I knew I wanted to put my photo a little bit under. I um, have popped my photo up on foam and then I'm just sticking some of the flowers down and some of the flowers up. I decided that one would be cute cut a little bit off so I actually just add that last little tiny bit up the top there because that little bit up the top was looking a little flat. Sorry about my buff head, but I wanted to make sure I was lining it up perfectly with the edge of the paper. I know I'm not going to use that whole strip of hearts, but I'm just having a look as to where I want the hearts to go and that um, little sentiment there. 
Uh, so I just cut off three, always an odd number. I want to make sure, uh, yeah, the having an odd number, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> having an odd number sort of draws your eye to the center. And so in this case, that would help focus your eye on the photo. So just popping up my cute little words there. I just really liked that smile sentiment because Jack's smiling and that was Tom's trying to smile. He's pretty little. He doesn't really quite smile just yet. Um, this layout's from January. So let's see, he's four months old in this photo. This was before the sleep went out the window. Um... I just stuck all those hearts together. No, nope, there was nothing wrong with them. Um, I think the bottom one said blessed, something about being blessed. And the light, yeah, the light pink one says thank you. Uh, totally fine, totally workable as they were. But I just loved the look of layering those together with the different colored pinks, especially going with the different colored pinks in the flowers. Um, and then I, I'm adding quite a bit of orange if I can uh, because, again, that, that matches in with the berries because the berries are yellow and orange. Um, and I'm also just kind of using up a few bits and bobs. I do, as I said earlier, I do still have one more layout to do uh, and I might have a bit of trouble when I get to that layout in terms of what ephemera is left, but eh, that's what happens when you use a kit and try and use as much of the kit as you can. And it's kind of part of the challenge, part of the fun. Um, so at this stage, <laughs> my son is yelling out to me that he needs help going to the bathroom, which is totally fine. But I kind of just shoved that green stay sprig in there. And I'm not really sure it goes. But by the time I come back, it's stuck. So it's going to stay there. Um... I was packing up some of the ephemera and then remembered I had these cute paper clip butterflies. So I thought uh, that that one, I don't know what color it looked in the video, white I think, but it's actually super light, um, white and light pink stripes. So I just pulled it off the paper clip. It's three layers with foam in between, so it's quite um, dimensional, but it's really cute. And so now I'm just trying to have a think of a title. I really had no clue where I wanted to go with the title. Um, I loved the idea of my friend. I'm like, oh, my two boys, they're friends. How cute is that? Really struggled to get these stickers off the page. Like, really struggled. I don't know why. Sometimes it's easy and yeah, it just really wasn't. And then I got frustrated and I ended up bending the thickers and I hate that because I put creases in them. But, you know, them's the break. So now I'm trying, I'm sitting here thinking, what can I put with my friend that's going to like tie the title together? Um, so I end up going with my brother, my friend, which I just think is so cute. Uh because they are totally friends. Jack loves his little brother. He's busting for him to be able to play. And Thomas is busting to play with him. He like... Uh, Daddy and Jack were, you know, playing rough and tumble on the bed. And Thomas and I were standing there watching. And Thomas was almost literally trying to like lunge out of my arms to join in. He just cannot wait to be big enough to play which is just melts your heart. I love it. So once I put the title on, back to, back to my layout, uh, I'm pretty much done. Um, it's super, super easy because that background piece was so large. Uh, it really sort of talks for it, speaks for itself. It's, it really is like a piece of pattern paper, the way that I've designed it. I just sort of changed it a little bit to how it was supposed to come. Um, but you don't need to do too much when you've got this gorgeous shiny gold um, background paper. So I just kind of added a few little bits of bobs and let it speak for itself. Uh, I didn't focus too much on clusters, but of course, naturally, you end up with your three little clusters um, sort of focused around the photo there. I've got basically where the three main flowers are. I know there are floor. 
for, sorry, that's not even partly true. Down the bottom of the photo, down the top right of the photo, and the top left of the photo is where my three clusters are, as you can see. And then, yeah, my title. Um, these layouts I don't put journaling on because they have an accompanying Project Life page. Uh, if you've watched my flick through, you'll see how um, my album is laid out. And so, basically... Um, the journaling is sort of included on that accompanying page and these photos are just kind of bonus really so I don't feel like they need um, journaling on Tom's first year album though I do I put journaling on that to tell the story because it's not always included on the PL page I do definitely date these though I really love having the date on there so now I'm having a look to see what color I want the background photo to background mat to be and that pink was fine. It was totally gorgeous. But I just had one of those, you know, oh, but they're boys. You don't want a bright pink background. I could totally have. But it was just, yeah, I don't know, just a little bit too much pink at the time in my mind. So then I tried to sort of match the, the bluey green leafy color. Um, but I didn't have either of the right colors there. So I put out the blues, but that was wrong. I put out my greens, but... Mm, I didn't like that I thought that was wrong so then I decided to that was wrong too um, better but wrong so then I decided to pull out my oranges and see how that would match in because I did do quite a bit of orange so I've got all of my paper divided by color um, in my dad has made me 12 by 12 boxes uh, and I end up going with this one because it's a bit of a um, duller orange. It's almost like, I don't know how to explain it. It's almost like distressed paper maybe or like homemade paper. It's not a, entirely smooth. It's textured a bit. I don't really know. But um, I really the color was the best. And I'm using, I'm not gutting the paper. I'm using the whole thing. A, because I have tons of flat, pattern, uh, flat cardstock. And B, because as I mentioned earlier, the white paper I'm using is really thin. And so it needs the strength behind it of this colored cardstock. So um, if I was going to mat the paper, uh, if I was going to gut this colored cardstock, I would have used a thick piece of white paper, like an American crafts or something, but I'm running out of that. I need to buy more of that too. So I just carefully stick that down because the Heidi shines a little bit wet and now I'm going to pull up the layout and give you a close up. So you can see the cute little top cluster there I shoved on. You can see the dimension in that butterfly, gorgeous. Um, so there's quite a bit of dimension on the page happening. Um, you know, the flowers are sticking up. There's the gorgeous color. Um, and then there's the things that are stuck up on foam. And yeah, I'm just super happy with how it turned out. So stay tuned for one more layout using this collection. And I will see you really, really soon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye.